welcome to this lecture on throughput accounting. I'm going to be using an example of a pizza factory to help you understand the concepts required for the exam. Now don't be fooled, throughput isn't just about products and factories. You can apply throughput accounting to services and in fact past exam questions have looked at beauty parlours and hairdressers and hospitals. Throughput is all about trying to maximise your output through the factory. My pizza factory has got three processes to make these two products called Maximo and Ultimo. One of those three processes will limit the output at the end of the day. It will be the bottleneck. Let's look at how a bottleneck results. Here I've got three processes, dough mixing, preparation of the pizza and cooking. Now if there was equal time in the factory for all three processes, then the bottleneck here would be the preparation of pizzas, because that's the one that processes the lowest number of units per hour. However, it's not as simple as that in exam questions. Because often the time available on each of the processes is different. Let's have a look at that now in a proper example. My pizza factory. Okay, so now what is the bottleneck? If we're now limited on the processing time in each of our three processes, there's six hours per day in dough mixing, 12 in preparation of pizzas, and 10 hours per day in cooking. In the table below, it tells us how much time it takes to make a batch of each pizza. Each batch is 30 units. And if you look at the Ultimo column, that batch of 30 units takes 30 minutes in dough mixing. 45 minutes in prep and 30 minutes in cook. The daily demand is 240 units. You can repeat all that for Maximo and you can see the timings and the units there for yourself. The issue here though is we need to compare like with like. We've got minutes in the processes but we've got available hours in the day. We've also got daily demand in units, but those times are for batches of 30 units. So we need to compare like with like, batches and hours, and therefore we need to create a new table. So here we have the table where I'm going to convert the daily demand into batches. And I would do that by dividing by 30. Then we need to convert the time on each of those three processes, which is in minutes into hours by dividing by 60. We're now ready to find out which of those processes is the bottleneck. We need to find out how many hours it takes for each process to make the required number of batches. Then see if there is enough hours available on that process. So here we have Ultimo is eight batches and Maximo is five batches. And as you can see, I've times the hours by the number of batches to show that eight batches is gonna take four hours of dough mixing time for Ultimo and 3.75 hours of dough mixing time for Maximo. You can see therefore then that prep and cook respectively have six and four for Ultimo and Maximo five and 2.5. We then total them up. Now the available hours from before were six, 12 and 10. So that therefore means the bottleneck is dough mixing because there are not enough hours available to cover the 7.75 hours needed to make eight batches of Ultimo and five of Maximo. Prep and cook 
have enough time, so they are not the bottleneck. Now, let me introduce to you throughput accounting and the ratios. First of all, we start with throughput return. Throughput is sales price minus material cost per unit. The only cost that's considered variable in throughput accounting is the material cost. Notice labour is included as part of total factory costs. That's an important point to note, and that will be a trick in questions for you. So throughput accounting considers all costs fixed other than materials. Then we come to the return per factory hour. You calculate that as the throughput return over the time on the key resource per unit. The key resource would be one of the processes that is the bottleneck. And remember that was dough mixing in our example. The cost per factory hour though is calculated as the total factory costs for the period over the time on the key resource for the same period. So effectively, you do that on a total basis, whereas the return you would do on a unit basis. Then the return per factory hour over the cost per factory hour is called the throughput accounting ratio. And for a product to be viable, effectively profitable in throughput terms, that needs to be greater than one. All these formulas need to be learnt. They're not given to you on the exam formula sheet. Let's now apply these formulas to our Latrecchio Pizza Company. Now here we have information for Ultimo and Maximo that will enable us to calculate their throughput accounting ratio, the TPAR. We've got sales prices, ingredient prices per unit, and labour costs per unit to give us a contribution per unit. Now remember, the trick in throughput accounting is that labour is considered a fixed cost. So we will just be calculating throughput as being sales price less ingredient cost per unit. And it says that beneath. Now all costs other than ingredients are considered factory costs. It then tells us that factory costs are 225,000 per annum and include labour and overheads. So you can be in no doubt that throughput return does not include labour. It then goes on to tell us that the factory operates five days a week for 50 weeks a year. We need that to be able to calculate the time on the bottleneck resource for the whole year to match with those factory costs. Let's now look at the throughput return per hour for Ultimo and Maximo. Now throughput return you do per unit or batch. So the throughput return is the sales price minus the material costs. Throughput return per unit is 350 and 425 respectively. But we've got to do it in batches because the time on the resource is in batches. So therefore the batch size is 30 units. So the throughput return per batch is therefore 105 and 127.5 respectively. Now we need to know the time on the bottleneck resource per batch. And therefore dough mixing, remember, was our bottleneck and it was 0.5 hours and 0.75 hours. You divide that into the throughput return per batch and you get a throughput return per hour. Now it's always based on the bottleneck resource. So if we were to rank them based on throughput return per hour, we would be making Ultimo first and then Maximo. Because Ultimo makes 210, which is greater than the 170 that Maximo makes per dough mixing hour. This is limiting factor analysis. Now let's look at the bottom of the equation for the throughput accounting ratio. 
Here we're now looking at the factory cost per hour. Now you need to do this on a total basis, not on a per unit basis. So remember, labour is considered a factory cost and it's included in that 225,000 per annum. So the factory cost per hour is going to be find the total factory cost for the period, which is 225,000 per annum. Find the time on the bottleneck for the same period, i.e. per annum. Now the time on the bottleneck resource per day was six hours. So dough mixing at six hours a day, five days a week for 50 weeks a year, means per annum, that equals 1,500 hours. We now simply divide one by the other, and therefore the factory cost per hour is 150. We now have both parts of the equation. Now, finding the throughput accounting return for products, you will notice they will have different throughput returns per hour, but the same factory cost per hour. So here we have this summary. Ultimo is 210 divided by 150 with a throughput accounting ratio of 1.4. Maximo has a throughput accounting ratio of 1.13. Again, if we were to rank them based on throughput accounting ratio, Ultimo would be first and Maximo would be second. That is the same ranking as we did for the throughput return per hour. And that's because the factory cost per hour is the same for both. So remember, the throughput accounting ratio should be greater than one if a product is to be viable. And as both our products have a throughput accounting ratio of greater than one, they're both viable. But how can you improve the throughput accounting ratio? Let's look at that now. So here is a typical question that you could be asked about in the exam. Here, the Trecchio Pizza Company has done a detailed review of its products, costs and processes and has identified potential actions to improve its throughput accounting ratio on its products. So which of the following statements will improve the throughput accounting ratio? A, a bulk discount on flour is available from suppliers. Okay, so flour, it's a material cost. And therefore throughput return is sales price minus ingredients. So if you're getting a bulk discount on your ingredients, therefore your return must be going up. And so that would be true. It reduces the material costs, which will increase the throughput return and therefore increase the throughput accounting ratio, as throughput return is on the top of that equation. B, the restaurant customer will be given a loyalty discount. OK, so you're selling pizzas to a restaurant customer. And if you're going to give them a loyalty discount, that must mean you're giving them a discount of the sales price. Now, remember, the sales price forms part of your return. So if you're reducing your sales price, you must be reducing your return. So that will not improve the throughput accounting ratio. C. There's additional demand for Maximo Pizza in the market. Well, throughput is all about getting output through the factory. We are limited at the moment because of one bottleneck, which is dough mixing. So it isn't demand that's the issue. It's getting a higher supply into the market. So even if demand goes up, we won't be able to supply anymore. So no, supply is limited at the current demand. D. The rent of premises has been reduced for the next year. Well, rent is a factory cost. And so therefore, if you're going to be reducing your factory cost, you're going to be reducing the bottom of the equation, which will mean the throughput accounting ratio will increase. So yes, it reduces factory costs and will increase the throughput accounting ratio. Finally, E, improve productivity in the preparation process. Well, yes, improving productivity in a process will increase the throughput. But in our question, the bottleneck is not the preparation process. It's the dough mixing process. So it's only improving productivity in that process 
that will increase the throughput accounting ratio. Because remember, the throughput accounting ratio is based on the bottleneck process, not on all the processes. So well done if you got those answers before I told you them. So that's all I'm going to be doing on a lecture on throughput accounting. There are a couple of more areas that are needed for the exam. And that area is also using limiting factor analysis in throughput accounting. For that, you'll need to join one of my courses. Thank you for watching. I hope you found it very useful, this lecture, and now you are a throughput accounting guru.